All right, let's take a look here at binding expressions. So in function JSON file and the function parameters code, you can use binding expressions that resolve to values from various sources. So most expressions are identified by wrapping them in curly braces. I say most because there's an exception where you do not use curly braces. But the idea is that um, it allows you to have kind of dynamic content within your function uh, JSON file. And there are a variety of different binding expressions. We have app settings, trigger file name, trigger metadata, JSON payloads, a, a GUID, current date and time. Let's go take a look at what those look like. The first is app settings. So when you want to change configuration based on the environment, you're gonna use percentage signs. This is the only case where you use percentage signs. Uh, it's confusing because it's the first example instead of curly. So notice that there's curly, uh, sorry, percentage signs there. Um, and then for trigger file name, this can be used to change the path of a file name, works for both in and out directions. So here we have the curlies here to say for the file name. For trigger metadata, many triggers provide additional metadata values. These values can be used as input parameters for C sharp, F sharp, or properties for context bindings and objects in JavaScript. So for example, if we're doing Azure queue storage, trigger supports the following properties, queue trigger, DQ, ID, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and then you'll notice that they are available here. So see Q trigger is here, Q trigger. It's typed in camel case mode. Uh, for JSON payloads, when a trigger payload is JSON, that means the, the, the data being passed is JSON, you can uh, refer to its properties and configuration of other bindings of the same function in the code. So, you know, if the payload was blob name and then hello, hello world.txt, you do blob name and that would put that here. Okay, um, and if some of your properties in your JSON payloads are objects, you can use the dot notation. So that's just a common thing for JSON or, or yeah, JSON or JavaScript. Um, for, for if you want a globally unique identifier, you can just do a rand GUID and you'll get something that looks like that. If you want to have the current date and time, you do date time, you're gonna get the current date and time in this format. So there you go.